In 2006, Cholney High School for Boys, Cholney High School for Boys entered 45 pupils for GCSE statistics, and Denby entered 34. This is the grade profile for each school for GCSE stats. For example, in Cholney Boys, 18 boys got grades C or D. In Denby, five pupils got grade E, and so on. H0, the grades are independent of school. H1, the grades are not independent of school. So this type of test can be used where you have two variables and you're testing to see if they're independent of each other or not. Okay, first step, make sure that the values in the table that you were given are frequencies. You can't do this test if these numbers here were not frequencies. For example, if they were percentages or if they were weights, times, that kind of thing. You can't do the test. So once you're sure that the data given all represent frequencies, work out the total for each row, the total for each column, and then if you add these two totals at the end, you'll get the table total here. Another way of getting the same value is to add these totals along here, and that will give you the same value there. Okay, next you have to work out expected values, E values. I forgot to mention that these values here, these are the observed values. Yeah, these are called O values, observed values. And you'll see that letter O appear in a formula that we're going to use um, uh, in a short while. Okay, the expected values are calculated using this formula. So what we're looking at here is Cholney High School for boys, grades A or B. How many boys did we expect to get grades A or B? And the way to work it out is for this particular figure here, for that 8 there, you work out the row total, which is 45, times the column total for that column there, where that particular number belongs, which is 24, and then you divide by the table total. So you're doing this calculation. And write down the uh, expected value here, correct, to uh, two decimal places. The more the better, but that may become uh, difficult to work with. But two decimal places is uh, a good number of um, uh, uh, figures to be working with. But you need, to, you need to do this for every single cell in the table. And this can be quite time consuming. Okay, so all of the values have been uh, worked out. We've got all of the E values worked out. Uh, just as an example, this value here, 11.19, we worked this out by using the row total, which was 34, times the column total, 26, divided by the table total, 79. I've just done the calculation here. As you can see, 11.19 correct to two decimal places. At this stage, check to make sure that the E values worked out are all more than 5. And looking at the E values here, every single value is more than 5. If not, then pooling of categories is required. Uh, have a look at a separate video for that. This is page 14 of the AQA formula book, a very useful um, uh, page for the uh, S3 exam. And it clearly uh, shows here contingency tables, which is what we're doing. And this formula here is what we're going to use to work out the test statistic. It also tells you that this value here is approximately distributed as chi-squared. Yeah, that's not x-squared, it's the Greek letter chi, chi-squared. And you've got some probability tables for chi-squared in this formula book. So the test statistic 
is calculated using this. O minus E in brackets squared divided by E. You write that value down and there's many calculations to do. That sigma is telling you to add them all together. Okay, let's have a go at using this uh, formula. So, fraction, open brackets, O minus E. So I'm going to take this particular cell in the table first. We work with one cell at a time, and then we move to the next one, then the next one, and so on. The order in which you go through these doesn't matter, as long as you've been through all of the cells that have O and E values in them. So this does not include the totals. Okay, this column here and this row here, ignore those. Just look at these cells here, where you have O and E values. So the O value is 8 minus the E value 13.67 squared, divided by E, 13.67. That's the first one done. That sigma's telling you, add everything together. So plus, then you do the next one, same again. Something squared, something minus something squared, divided by... So let's do this one. 18 minus 14.81 divided by 14.81, yeah, all that squared and so on. Um, on the calculator, you're doing this. So for the first one, fractions, brackets, 8 minus 13.67, close brackets. You put the square outside the brackets, remember that not inside, it's not 13.67 squared, it's that minus that squared, like this, over 13.67. Plus, fractions, open brackets, 18 minus 14.81, close brackets, squared, over 14.81 equals 0 0.687 0 0.687 plus dot 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 uh, I'm not going to work all of these out here this is the least you should show in the exam it clearly shows you're using this formula because you've shown numbers substituted into that formula so now you've got method marks. And once you've worked out all of these individually, you're then going to, in, in your final step, just add up these values, which is what you're doing here, sigma. Just add them together. Uh, don't try and do all of this continuously on your calculator. So, for example, you know, I've done this, and I'll put you in plus, fractions, uh, open brackets, like that. You may find your calculator runs out of memory and you might run into trouble. It's better to do these individually, write the value down individually, write the value down, then add these together at the end. You will lose a little bit of uh, accuracy because you are rounding these figures as you go along, but the uh, mark schemes allow for um, uh, some errors due to rounding. Okay, after working out all of these, uh, the test statistic, or x squared, is equal to 8.08. .08. Remember this here is x squared. In the uh, formula book, the probability tables that go with this, uh, they're called chi squared. They look similar, but x squared is like this and chi is like this. For the calculation here, any test statistic that lies between 7.80 and 8.03 would score full marks. Okay, so there is some uh, leeway for errors here. You don't have to have you know one exact value that they've got in the mark scheme, um, which is good. Yeah, this is in your favour. So here we are, the formula book, chi square distribution, page 27, table 6. Okay, here's page 27 and you have the chi-squared distribution. P is probability, that's these values along here. This V along the side, it's actually the uh, Greek letter nu, 
uh, you can call it V if you want to, it represents the number of degrees of freedom. Now the critical region for what we're doing is always here. This unshaded region in this sketch is the part that we're going to shade. This will become our critical region. And we're not going to shade this side. Yeah, so we do the opposite to what we see in this sketch here. I'm using a 5% significance level, which means the 5% is in this region here. That's 5%. Which means, if that's 5, this is 95%. This side is 95%. It's this side that corresponds to P in the tables. So 0 0.95 here. This is the column that you need to keep your focus on. Now to know which value to stop at, you need to know the number of degrees of freedom. And that's quite simple. Work out the number of rows in your table. And when I say rows, the only ones we're interested in are the ones where you had the original data. So there's one row, and there's a second row two rows. So I'm not looking at you know these labels here or these totals here. Ignore them. Two rows. And then you need the number of columns. Again, only the columns that um, uh, consist of the uh, original data. So that's one, two, three, four columns. Not this one here with the labels and not these totals here. Four columns subtract one from each of these numbers each. So the number of rows was two, so you do this, two minus one. The number of columns is four, so subtract one from that, you do four minus one. You're multiplying these. Two minus one is one, four minus one is three, so we have three degrees of freedom. So that V there is three. That's why when you go to the tables, we're going to 3 degrees of freedom, and that critical value, 7.815, is coming from here. There's 3, and earlier we said uh, the p-value there was 0 0.95. 7.815 is the critical value right there. 7.815. So this is what you should um, uh, sketch at this stage. Okay, along here, you've just got a number line and the critical value, 7.815 is here. This is the critical region. This is where you reject H0. This is where you accept our test statistic was 8.08. .08. On this number line, I've marked 8.08 .08 here. Clearly that lies in the rejection region. So our conclusion will be to reject H0. So here's the conclusion. Reject H0. There is significant evidence that grades are not independent of school. Um, another way of saying this that will probably make more sense to you because you've got you know, not independent. You could say that grades are dependent on the school. Yeah, that makes more sense. But what you had there before wasn't wrong. That was correct as well. So because the grades depend on the school, now we can have a look at the data further and work out which school is better. To do this, have a look at the observed value, so the actual number of students who scored a particular grade, and the number of students we expected to get that grade. Clearly for Cholney boys, eight students got A and B grades, but we were expecting significantly more to get A and B grades. We were expecting closer to, you know, between 13 and 14 students to get um, A and B grades. So that's really low. For Denby, 
we expected around 10, maybe 11 students to get A and B grades, but they did significantly better by having 16 students scoring A and B grades. So this would um, uh, imply that Denby students did better than Chonley boys, and the school that the students went to did matter.